This video goes over the basics of Google Sheets. If you're familiar with Excel documents, you'll see that a Google spreadsheet looks very much like Excel and it behaves in much the same way. We'll start with how to access Google Sheets. There are several ways you can do that. The first thing you can do is click on this waffle icon in the upper right corner and then choose the green Sheets icon. When you go in this way, you're going to end up on the main page of your Google Sheets. Along the top there are several templates to choose from. If you click where it says Template Gallery, you can see even more options. For now, we are starting with a blank document. So when you choose the blank template, this is what it will look like when you open your spreadsheet. Here is another way to get to Google Sheets. From your Google Drive, you can click on the new button in the upper left corner and then click on the green Google Sheets option. When you do that, a new blank spreadsheet document opens up. In this example, I have some sample data that I pasted in so I can show you a few things about using some of the basic spreadsheet tools. First of all, you notice that the data is organized into cells of rows and columns and you can manipulate entire rows at a time and entire columns at a time. For example, if I wanted to color one of these columns, I can click on the top here in the letter area. This is column C and I've selected it by clicking up there if I wanted to color the whole column. I would select the fill color by clicking on the paint can icon in the toolbar. It works the same way by clicking on a row if I wanted to color row 7. I could go to the paint can again and color that as well. That's how this table row got its color. You can also highlight specific cells by clicking and dragging part of a row or a column 2. If you click on a cell in the very middle of the cell and then drag across you'll select just that part of the spreadsheet and then from there you can change the color. You can also adjust the size of rows and columns. If I click in the letter area at the top I can wind in these columns. If I click between the numbers over on the side I can change the height of the rows. If I want it to be uniform across the whole sheet I can select the whole sheet by clicking in the little blank area in the upper left corner and that selects the whole sheet. Now watch what happens when I click and drag between two of these rows. It makes them all uniformly fit height. Same with columns. With the whole spreadsheet selected, this makes all of them exactly the same. Remember, to select the whole spreadsheet, click in the top left corner here to select the whole sheet. To deselect you can click any cell in the sheet. Because I did some moving around you can see that some of my data is hidden and I can't see all of these words. I could go and click and drag to resize the cell but one nice way to do this automatically is to double click on that line between the letters to automatically size the cell to fit the widest content in that column. You can also resize cells in a row too when the data is larger than the cell. Another way to see the data is to change the text wrapping of the cell. In the toolbar, there are alignment options. Choose the arrow that curves back to wrap the text in the cell and increase the height of the row to fit the data. You can do this with one cell, or an entire row or column. Let's talk more about alignment. When you type the information into a cell like this it may not be in the location of the cell you like. Sometimes it might end up down on the bottom of that cell. Just so you know, you can change your vertical alignment with this tool and if you click here you can change the alignment to the top of the cell. You can also choose to align the cell to the center. Just like any other text, you can also choose whether it's left aligned, center or right aligned. Okay, now we are going to switch gears and talk about how to insert different items into your spreadsheet. First of all, we'll talk about inserting rows and columns. If I need an extra row, I can select a row, then right click and choose to insert one above or below. That gives me a brand new blank row. I'm going to hit undo and show the same for columns. If I need a column, I right click and choose the option to insert one to the right or left and then I get a new blank column. Any formatting I've done like a font or a cell color, will also stay with the new row or column. Now I'll show you how to insert images. If you want to add an image you can either put an image directly in a cell or you can put an image on top of the spreadsheet that hovers over the cells. To insert an image in a cell, click a cell first and then click the insert menu and then click the image menu item. Choose whether to place the image in or over the cell. In the window that pops up, there are many choices about where I am going to get this image. In this example, I'll go to Google image search and search for a pencil. When I choose an image and then click the insert link at the bottom of the search window, the pencil is inserted into the cell. The size of the image depends on the size of the cell. The taller the cell, the larger the image. If you put the image above the cells, you can manually change the size and location of the image. You can also put links in cells. In this example I'll put a link by right clicking a cell and selecting the insert link option. Multiple links can be added to the contents of a cell by selecting a cell. Click and drag over a word or words. Then choose the link tool in the toolbar and insert the link in the pop-up window. The link tool looks like a chain link. One of the benefits of using a spreadsheet is to automate data entry. When you click on a cell and you want to repeat what's in that cell, you can do that by dragging the lower right corner of the cell. Drag downward and the data will repeat. This also works dragging along a row which inserts the contents all the way across. Clicking in the corner of the cell will just copy the contents of the cell down the column until it runs into an empty row. So these are a few of the amazing things you can do with Google Sheets. Please check our other videos for more information on using Google Sheets.